Hello and welcome to Midday Connection at First Presbyterian Church on Wednesday, April 27th. Happy that you guys can join us today. I'm Pastor Joel. And I'm Natalie. And we're here to read our daily lectionary text for today and to say a prayer about it, talk about it a little bit, and uh, see where the Lord's going to lead us. Let me open this in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, thank you so much for your word to us today. Lord, let us continually be transformed by it and um, let us be obedient to that which you've called us to do uh, and that we would be the people that you've called us to be. We thank you for this time, Lord, and we bless it in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, this morning we are going to start with Psalm, what does it say, 99? Let's see, Psalm 99. Oh, and once again, we have lots of doors banging around. We've got... Uh, the kids from our Mother's Day Out program, I think they're leaving right about now, and so there might be some a little bit of noise in the background, but that's okay. All right, Psalm 99. The Lord is king, let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion, he is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name, holy is he. Mighty king, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Extol the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those who called on his name. They cried to the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them in a pillar of cloud. They kept his decrees and the statutes that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem, he gathers the outcasts of Israel, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner, but the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Our Hebrew scripture text today is from Exodus chapter 15, starting in verse 22 and running through, what is that, verse 1610. Uh, then Moses ordered Israel to set out from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the water of Marah because it was bitter. That is why it was called Marah. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? He cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he put them to the test. He said, If you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, and give heed to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will not bring upon you any of the diseases that I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to uh, Elam, where there were twelve springs of water and seventy palm trees, and they camped there by the water. The whole congregation of the Israelites set out from Elim, and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. 
and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. And Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. And from the New Testament, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1-10. through 10. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice, and all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in, the, stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in, a Zion, in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his mar marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Our gospel reading is from John chapter 15, 1 through 11. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. Psalm 9. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turned back, they stumbled and perished before you. For you have maintained my just cause. You have sat on the throne giving righteous judgment. You have rebuked the nations, and you have destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. And our final psalm today is Psalm 118. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. 
the Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. With the Lord on my side, I do not fear what can mortals do to me. The Lord is on my side to help me. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations surrounded me. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every side. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me like bees. They blazed like a fire of thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. I will give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Whenever we get into these Exodus passages and trying to compare them to, gosh, even today, 1 Peter, uh, there's always a lot going on. This is one of the things that I find and that we find when reading Scripture, that these stories, though maybe familiar, these, uh, these stories that are just um, uh, familiar to us over the many years of reading them, they can become and remain so complex in what we're looking at, that it's totally worth reading these things. Uh, this whole uh, Exodus journey that the Israelites are on um, today, if you've been keeping up with the lectionary texts uh, the last few days, it has been the Lord delivering the Israelites through the Red Sea and how the Israelites walked on dry land, how the Egyptians came in after them, how the flood waters returned, how the Israelites made it out, the Egyptians were all destroyed, and there's been essentially uh, a whole chapter of, of singing, where Moses sings of the deliverance, Moses' sister Miriam sings of the deliverance, and uh, the people continue on their journey, and they go out into this place, and all of a sudden, they oh, well, the water is sour. Oh, did you bring us out here that we might die? And... <laughs> And, you know, you, you, you read these things and you're, oh, yeah, well, we would do better, right? We would know better. We clearly wouldn't complain about what the Lord's doing in our midst. Um, but they complain about the water being bitter. The Lord provides a way for Moses to throw some wood into the water. It makes it sweet. I know uh, ancient uh, commentaries talk about how it's a foreshadow even of the cross of Christ where uh, bitter water becomes sweet when, when Jesus is present. But uh, within the story at the time, uh, clearly the Lord provides for them water enough to drink. And then he gives them this command, he gives them this test, do what I tell you to do, and then I won't enact upon you those plagues that I sent on the Egyptians. And immediately then they find themselves out in this place where they have no food. And again, they start complaining. Oh, we, I wish that we would have died back in Egypt where we actually could eat our fill. But they were slaves. But they were slaves. And I keep thinking, uh, maybe they were so hungry, right, that, that even slave fare seems like the flesh pots of Egypt that they get to eat their fill of bread. Um, 
and how, how strange it is. Every time I read this, every time I read this, I keep thinking, well, I would clearly do better. Clearly I would do better. Uh, but if we jump over to 1 Peter, and if 1 Peter is telling people who have faith in Jesus to put aside malice and guile and insincerity and envy and slander, well, Dang it. It's not doing much better. <laughs> the people, the people that Peter's writing to, the people that Peter are writing to are acting like the Israelites wandering around the wilderness. Right. They grumble and complain and they have malice towards one another. Um, but the uh, this this line that Peter quotes in terms of coming to him, this this uh, cornerstone, precious and chosen. Yes, it's from uh, one of the, the Psalms that we read today, and, but it's also from a prophecy in Isaiah. There's this ongoing picture of one who will become the cornerstone or the, the keystone for the arch, the one in which everything is held together. Right. And ultimately, that's Jesus Christ. And when you put your faith in him, you're not going to be put to shame. That he is going to be the one that makes the, the nation stumble and fall, uh, but the one that upholds the people who have faith in him. Right. What I found interesting about all three of the, not the Psalms, but the other three passages that we read, that we read, the Exodus passage, obviously. They were God's people. I mean, he sent the plagues on Egypt in order to allow them to, to be released and to take right, them out. And right. then he delivered them through the Red Sea. And so they are delivered. They are his chosen people. He chose them. And when you come over to the Peter passage, um, of course, the cornerstone, and that is that is our foundation. That is Christ is our foundation. And we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, mm -hmm. a holy nation, God's own people. Mm -hmm. Um, you flip over to the John passage and it's talking about the, the vine and, and the root system and how we are connected. And I think when we look at that in the world today, like you said, you know, people, they screw it up all the time, but it's the whole world tells us who we are. And we have this whole identity created of who we are and it's the job that we have. It's the places that we live. It's the organizations that we belong to. And I think if you ask most people, you know, tell me about yourself, that's what you would get. You would get a list of all of these things that create this identity, but that's all a, a worldly identity. But all three of these, the Exodus, the Peter, and the John passage, and even the Psalms reiterate that though, because it's talking about the cornerstone and we have an identity in Christ. We have an identity of who we are. And, and the world doesn't always view that. In fact, sometimes the world tells us that that's not a value or that's not important. Um, but the reality is, as we talk about this cornerstone here in Peter, and I think it was the Psalm 118 that you read, but rather than flipping back, just the idea, though, that you have this cornerstone and it will cause people to stumble. And the reality is he is the cornerstone. He is the basis of all of that. He is what keeps everything tied together. And the world can say what it wants. Um, I tell my kids all the time, they come home from school and they're upset because somebody has said something and, and I'm like, well, is it true? And they're like, no. And I'm like, if they say it enough times, does it make it true? Well, no. And I'm like, okay. And you know, it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. It doesn't mean sure. it's not hard to, to deal with that. You know, just childhood squabbles, you know, in the schoolyard. But it's the same thing. The world can say, what it wants about Jesus. It can say what it wants, but it doesn't discount and it doesn't make the reality untrue. Mm -hmm. And so there, there is truth and he is the cornerstone. Mm -hmm. And he did have his delivered people in Egypt. And we are a chosen people. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. He chose us. And that does give us an identity regardless of what the world tells us. That is true. It's just how we respond and how we live into that. I think you're. I think you're right. I was noticing something uh, there in that Exodus 16 that they had been um, hanging out for a while by the springs of water, the twelve springs of water with the seventy palm trees, and there they camp. 
but then when they leave from there and go into a place where uh, you know the wilderness of sin as, as it were as they're approaching uh, between Elam and Sinai it was the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt so in a way maybe they thought deliverance from Egypt was going to be um, relatively quick and painless maybe the transition from slavery to promised land was only going to last a few months and it was going to be next to this oasis with pools of water and palm trees that we can, oh, you know, hey, that sounds good to me. Who wouldn't, who wouldn't want to just go camping with God for a month or two, right. hanging out by the pools? That sounds great. It totally does. But then he takes them out into this wilderness area where there's no food. It's like, God, what are you up to? I wish we were slaves again, because at least we could eat. Right. Um, and I wonder, I wonder for Christians today, I wonder for myself from time to time, uh, wouldn't it just be great if all we got to do was go camping with God, hang out, it's almost like it was a little bit of a, of a vacation, right? They've been working, working, working as slaves in Egypt, and now they're hanging out by the oasis and enjoying God's presence. And that was probably good, it was probably necessary, it was probably needed even. But then the hard work of traveling through the wilderness continues. And uh, uh, I wonder if there are too many Christians who think that that faith in Jesus is the e eternal camping, you know, the, the eternal lounging as opposed to eternal dependence upon God, right. especially through difficult times. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it should all be easy. We should all have what we want others shouldn't be getting more blessings than us and mm -hmm. it's people live that way and they think that way and I think when you look at the beginning of that Peter you know rid yourself of malice and guile and insincerity and envy and slander why do we have a need to do those things mm -hmm. but people do they fall into those traps all the time I'm included in that people <laughs> <laughs> don't think we are excluded from the problems right. that people face right right I'm not saying those people I mean I'm saying Right. We do. We fall into that. Um, that human nature in us falls into that. And um, the reality is, is he is the cornerstone. You right. know, he, he is. And it's not always easy. Right. It's not always easy. What we're called to do is not always easy. Yeah. Uh you know, Jesus is the vine and the Father is the vine dresser and he prunes those branches that bear no fruit um, or he cuts them off. He, he, even, he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that more fruit would, be, uh, would, would, would result. Um, and, uh, and, and, it, and it comes back to this obedience again. It comes back to if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you, uh, if you love me... Um, just as I have loved the Father and I keep his commandments. So how do we how do we continue to keep God's commandments more fully, more faithfully? Um, and I think it's it's more than just uh, a mental assent to the truth of Scripture. It has to be put into daily practice. It has to be something where each and every day, waking up in the morning, uh, throughout the day, even before going to bed at night, Lord, what do you want me to do? Who do you want me to be? How do you want me to follow you, to be more obedient? Um, trusting, ultimately, that it's his grace and it's his mercy that sustain us anyway, because we're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to fall short. We're all going to uh, end up in a place that we don't want to be sometimes. Uh, but but I think this is, again, the, the just the, the glory of God being revealed to us again through his word today. You know, the 118, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. You know, it's, it's, it's this ongoing refrain um, all throughout Scripture. Uh, the Lord is righteous. The Lord is loving. The Lord forgives. The Lord desires a relationship with you um, and, and calls us as a community of believers to experience that together in, in joy and peace and unity. Um, with those challenges that are always directing us to depend more on more on Jesus, less on ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah. Well, it, I think all of that can be summed up in that that First Peter verses four and five. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. If we are allowing ourselves to be built into a spiritual house, building is a process. Mm -hmm. It takes time, and there are steps, and we have to allow ourselves to be formed into that yeah. and built into that. So. Yeah, I love that image. It's um, yeah, that's good stuff. How are we built into this together? You know, the, if if Christ is the chief cornerstone. I am not the entirety of the rest of the house. We need other right. stones. We are all part of that. And we are all dependent on each other, and we are all leaning on Christ. We are all, take Christ out of the picture, and we're going to fall down. Right. Keep him in the picture, and the community is built uh, that gives glory to God and um, allows us to rejoice in his goodness. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Every Every day. All right, everybody, keep reading your scripture. Uh, keep trusting that God speaks to you through his Holy Spirit uh, to transform you. Uh, keep, um, keep asking questions. Keep reaching out. And within the community that you have, whether you are a part of First Presbyterian San Angelo or whether you are part of another community, uh, keep reaching out to your community, uh, loving and serving them and, and calling them to be built up in Christ together. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, again, thank you for your word to us. Um, uh, thank you for building us up uh, that we can be a community of faith that puts our trust in you. Uh, Lord, continue to provide for us that which we need. We know that you promised to do so. Uh, but Lord, we find ourselves in difficult situations many times. Uh, we know, Lord, that there are a lot of people who are struggling uh, you know, with inflation being up, um, health care being a concern. Um, even just relationally, Lord, people are, are always being challenged by, by broken relationships or, or difficulties in them. Uh, Lord, provide for us that which we need. Uh, teach us greater obedience to you, because really in terms of following your commandments, we are demonstrating our love for you, just as you demonstrated your love for the Father by being obedient to what he called you to do, Lord. And ultimately, that was to give your life for our sake. Lord, in, in like, like manner, Lord, help us to truly serve others and to sacrifice that others might truly live. Um, Lord, thank you for your love and thank you for your word. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us today. Hope you have a great day, and uh, we'll look forward to the next time that we all have together. Bye-bye.